She's a belly facing the sun. -er. She's a belly facing the sun kind of cat for damn sure. I can guarantee you that. Oh, she found the mouse. Now Haywire is <coughs> Pardon me. Very good. Well, I'm going to try to cough as little as possible, but um, we, come to you, we come to you on this, the 23rd episode of the podcast. Sunday. I'm Connor. Oh. And I'm Sam. And Sam has a side note. No, I said it ended it's Sunday. Oh, and it's Sunday. It is on Sunday. On this day, our Lord. Yes. Of D&D, &D, the 22nd episode of the podcast. 23rd. 23rd? 23rd. All right, take two. <laughs> we'll do it live. We're not actually going to do a second take. We'll do our intro. We'll see. It is this the 22nd? 22nd? Is it the 22nd episode of the, sure the 23rd, 23rd episode of the podcast? On this our Lord's Day, the first week of the National Football League. Don't talk to me about it. I I wasn't planning on it. Yeah, the Bengals lost a heartbreaker to me. And that's uh, that's going to just have to be what it's going to be, because I, I don't want to fall into a crippling depression. Notice how I emphasized crippling. Falling into a normal, standard, run-of-the-mill depression, I mean, that's just... That's a that's Tuesday afternoon for you. I mean, don't fuck with, like, everything on the table, please. That would be great if you didn't do that. I would love that greatly. Me too. Anyway, this is uh, this is the Dungeon Bros podcast. I am Connor, and I'm Sam, and we are the Dungeon Bros, though we are not brothers. Nor are we in a dungeon. Indeed, we are in a home. In oh oh, and those caps are lost forever to time. Now, she's lucky that she is just just so cute, so cute. just unbelievably cute to the point that. I, I would I would legitimately be willing to uh, continue to own and love her, uh, even under great war crimes. If I'm being entirely honest with you, mm, you would you're saying you would commit war crimes, or even if she committed war if crimes. If she committed war crimes, I would still love and support her in every way. Got it. Feasible to both man and woman and child across all societies, um, as well as I would be willing to commit grave acts of war crimery in her name mm, I see. at her behest if you will because of the amount of cuteness she has I'm going to crack my beverage fuck <laughs> ladies and gentlemen <sighs> Connor Bright it's been a weekend man don't use my last name nah fuck it whatever Connor Bright I don't give a shit I think it yeah we probably I mean, said it at some point probably it's not it's not Fine. like Sam Holcomb boom how's that make you feel it's on all of my social media so very good you know, you know, we at Sam Insanity. It, yes, that's my personal, and you're at Connor T. Bright. I believe. Yeah, my yeah, my personal is Connor T. Bright. That's just my fucking name. So, like, there we go. You know, we always say we want to like we, the, the goal is to do like a hot style, like who was we talking ah. already in conversation, hey. and oh. it's usually just focused around what the cat is currently doing. Because whenever we sit down, just the two of us at this table, whether we are recording the podcast, getting ready to record the podcast, simply going over the news items for the podcast, playing fucking Magic the Gathering or anything. The moment we both sit at this table, it's like shit's popping off with the cat now. Yeah. That's her cue to be like, I need to do everything that I possibly can. And I don't know what cue we've given her that that's the acceptable time to be doing this, but I'm not sure. Here we are. Here we are. Here we are, once again, torn into pieces. So today we've got some controversies, as well as some more controversies. Yeah, there's just all As over well the place. as some random shit. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about 1D&D, because I feel like our opinions have evolved a little bit since the last episode of the podcast, where we gave kind of like our first look impressions. Yeah, that's true. That's fair. Yes, yeah, probably. Talked so. more about it. Thought more about it. Indeed. Indeed. Anyway. If you want to contribute to the podcast, you can always write in on the TikTok Live, which we record live on our TikTok, Dungeon Bros YT, as well as in our Discord server, where we actually do have a question we will get to later. Uh, you can join that via the link tree in the, bi in the bio, cat, of all the social medias. I saw her playing, playing and playing at the cords. I'm moving a little bit because I'm out of frame. Doing a little, doing a little pitter patter on the cords, you know? Gotcha. Anyway, Discord, Instagram. 
and all in the link tree the in our bio. Sam had Sam had a lovely video talking about improv and uh, beer. Beer, yes. On on the YouTube's. Yeah, as well. I, I was I was really wanting to become the uh, the Alton Brown, the good eats of of D and D. Media on YouTube, but uh, I would say right now you are the 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 fine eats of D and D media. I'm the, yeah, the okay eats. I you know the decidedly nothing special eats in D and D media. <laughs> I think that uh, going to put that series on the back burner until we have like you know time and energy and yeah. um and Andy Andy lives with us and edits our videos full time and is under our employ and um. Yeah. Waits on us hand and foot, possibly. We'll do it up big. Gives up all of his worldly possessions and dreams, wife included, to simply make content for us. And, and with us. And with us. And, uh, well, maybe not with us. We, we don't want to get him too big in his britches. Uh, looking right now. He's got more followers, more subscribers on YouTube than we do, so. Uh. I mean, we're, we're just, we're trucking away. Now, what I will say, I don't know what, I, I know I know much about the YouTubes. We know much about the TikToks. Mm-hmm. They still manage to just slap us in the face with bullshit constantly. And uh, randomly, YouTube decided that our uh, Great Weapon Master and Sharpshooter video needed to be seen by more people. And we had been talking about the views increasing. Do you remember what we what number we uh, last spoke last of? Last we spoke of was at 504. Was it 504? Interesting. Interesting. Uh, I'm looking at it right now. 941. Well, ladies and gentlemen... There we go. We got him. Very good. Anyway, you can find us on the YouTubes where we are going to start making YouTube content. Hopefully, twice monthly. Get a good ramp starting in October. Monthly? Then we're going to... Just monthly, maybe? I don't know. We're dedicating this time to you, the viewer. We'll figure that out. Anyway, we've waffled on long enough. I'm sure you all probably know what the top story this week will be if you have any pulse on what is going on in... The Dungeons and Dragons universe. But wait, before we get into that, I did have a, I did have a, a, something brought to the forefront. Oh dear. Yes. Um, to the front of, of four? What, what does five think of that? Not happy about it. Not happy. I mean, three can't see. Three to, yeah, three, which yeah, we don't know. No, uh, well, of course we've had the great debate, is the topic a, a hot dog a sandwich? Oh God. I mean, it is. We, we, we agree. Anymore. Yes, it exactly. It, we have it's been we have decided cleared. in the lore. Um, now, I was driving with our friend Rachel uh, to and from Chicago a couple weekends ago, and uh, uh, was end up talking on the phone to her boyfriend Alex, as as one often would do with a significant other. Yes, and um, this vaguely came up, and this is the question that was posed to me. Because this is an ongoing debate between them. Now, um, I'm going to get an official Google definition here of the word athlete. Oh, boy. The word athlete being defined by the Oxford Dictionary as a person who is proficient in a sport and other forms of physical exercise or a person. I already disagree with that definition, but okay. Uh, a, a person who... Uh, has has pushed themselves physically to become uh, to adapt their body to do great you know forms of activity okay now sidebar i think the first part of the athlete definition someone who has trained who what what, what was give me that first part again word for word verbatim Uh, control shift d sorry a person who is proficient in sports and other forms of physical exercise now proficient in sports I'm on board for it. Other forms of physical exercise. I don't think those designate you as athlete. I think they can designate you as athletic, as in having the properties therein of an athlete, someone who is proficient in a sporting event of some kind. And I also broaden the sports category to include things such as you know, the the classic high school school debate is cheerleading a sport. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a sport. Okay. You know, I would argue that. In some ways, marching band is a sport. Concert band, not a sport. Not a sport. Incidentally. Not a lot of not a lot of physical activity going. Yeah. Mostly a lot of sitting. Now tennis, of course. Tennis, golf. Uh, tennis, golf, football, running. basketball, baseball, competitive running. I mean, you're not I don't think that someone just running the streets is an athlete. Just willy nilly doing whatever they want. If you're running a marathon, sure. If you're running a fucking 
in a track and field meet cross country so somebody who know. is who is exerting themselves and pushing their limitations for a competitive nature for not even for a competitive nature but for a competitive recognized sporting event competitive nature i mean we could have a fucking we could we could be doing like sprint races drunk on the on the fucking in the road like doing a quarter mile run each that doesn't make us athletes you know? But but if our what if our what if we were training to do quarter mile sprints while drunk at a big competition of some sort? <laughs> it's, then it's, we would have. I mean, it's that's, like the, it's, it's like, a gray area yeah, for sure. A, so in, but, in but that would imply that you are working towards a goal and thus would make you an athlete. Okay. But, so but if we we're like hanging out and drinking, I don't fucking run. You don't. And if, and if I was and if I was like, man, I can beat I we fat people are great runners over short distances, natural sprinters, as Gimli might say. And we fucking took it outside and went for a sprint down the road. That doesn't make me an athlete. You're probably considered an athlete because of the tough mutters. You know, athlete doesn't have to necessarily mean good. It's fair. Just proficient in or even really participatory in. I would, I would, yeah, I think that's what I would remove. I would remove the proficient in and participatory in to make it. Okay. You know. So by, by this discussion we've had, are competitive eaters, competitive hot dog eaters, athletes, there are recognized competitions. People train to eat 47 hot dogs in the course of three minutes. The jury has reached a verdict. Okay. I like how you were the entire jury. <laughs> Judge, jury, and executioner here. Yeah. I would say that by my definition, I would have to classify them as an athlete. And, it, and as someone who has dabbled in large quantities of food consumption, it's no small order. You know, it's not a right. Yeah, it's no. not a simple task. It's why there in are. Front of you. It's why so many so many restaurants have these food challenges. Man versus food, where you get the food for free, presumably if you complete the challenge, and they're confident in doing that, knowing that most people will not be able to complete mm-hmm. that challenge. Sometimes you even get a T-shirt. Yeah. I, I did. Did Brown? Brown sorry. is no. Hold on. She's not a part of this. <laughs> Did Rachel uh, assume that this was? Did they? Did she assert that this was an athlete? Uh, no, she asserted that hot dog, uh, uh, competitive hot dog eaters. She did, she was not a fan of them being athletes. Well, you can, and of course she can choose to not be a fan of it all she wants. That doesn't change the definition. There are many people that are not fans of the fact that the hot dog is a sandwich, but it nonetheless is, and that's just going to be how it's going to be. And I'm sorry if you don't like that, but. There's objective and subjective realities <laughs> that we live in, and this is this is one of the objective ones. And that's just how it is. It's just how it is, just ladies and gentlemen. Is. That is just how it is. All right, all right. We've now waffled. we're done with our waffling. Now we have waffled on long enough. We're, we've get... cleaned the waffle iron. We're we're putting it into cabinet. Let's get to the top story. If you are if you are into D and D or follow what's going on in the D and D world, you will be probably well aware of uh, this situation uh, surrounding the recent Spelljammers release. There was a new race, the Hadozi, that stirred up quite a bit of controversy. Uh, the Hadozi is a uh, an ape-like race that has uh, wing gliders, much like a sugar glider or a flying squirrel would. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in the lore, the Hadozi, the lore that was presented in the first publishing of the Hadozi was uh, these were creatures that were generally no smaller than a house cat that were hunted very uh, viciously by the predators of uh, the planet that they lived on. So they developed the wings for gliding through the treetops uh, and they grew slightly. Uh, then a uh, an evil wizard of sorts came and started to do experimentation upon them, granting them intelligence and trying to subjugate them and sell them to, the, quote, the highest bidder. And uh, were eventually released by some of the wizard's apprentices that did not care for the practices that were being performed upon them. Uh, in addition to that, some of the lo- uh, the images that it were depicting the Hadozi seemed uh, reminiscent of uh, certain racist iconographies associated with black people in America. 
uh, particularly in their time when uh, slaves were brought over and in their uh, release from slavery later on in American history. Um, The images have some some recognition to uh, minstrel depictions of black people Mm -hmm. uh, that were very... That were, that were racist and uh, prejudiced against them. Racial, um, racial, cari- ra- uh, racial caricatures. Racial caricatures, that's yes. the word. That's good. Um, and many people were calling out the lore as racist in its depiction and similarities to that of the black experience in early America, uh, as well as uh, showing the Hidozi as somewhat helpless in their situation, needing to be white knighted, as some have said, by uh, the wizard's apprentices. Uh, There were many an article from publications that we both like and respect, as well as uh, some that kind of annoy the shit out of us. Um, Hashtag Polygon. Hashtag Polygon. Hashtag... I don't even... But yeah, basically, uh, every every major publication in the the nerding world um, had an article on this. Yes. Uh, On September 2nd, uh, Wizards of the Coast quietly, at the time, removed the uh the description for the Hadozi and replaced it with a new description and then later that day released an official statement i'm going to read the statement in full quote we wanted to acknowledge and own the inclusion of offensive material within our recent spell jammer adventures in space content we failed you our players and our fans and we are truly sorry the campaign included a people called Hadozi, which first appeared in 1982 Regrettably, not all portions of the content relating to the Hadozi were properly vetted before appearing in our most recent release. As we continue to learn and grow through every situation, we recognize that to live our values, we have to do better. Throughout the 50-year history of Dungeons & Dragons, some of the characters in the game have been monstrous and evil, using descriptions that are painfully reminiscent of how real-world groups have been and continue to be denigrated. We understand the urgency of changing how we work to ensure better... We understand the urgency of changing how we work to better ensure a more inclusive game. Effective immediately, we will be removing offensive content about Hadozi in our digital versions, and these will no longer be included in future reprints of the book. Our priority is to make things right, and when we make mistakes... Oh, sorry. Our priority is to make things right when we make mistakes. In addition, we've initiated a thorough internal review of the situation and will take the necessary actions as a result of that review. We are eternally grateful for the ongoing dialogue with the D&D community, and we look forward to introducing new, engaging, and inclusive content for two Dungeons & Dragons for generations to come. D&D teaches that diversity is strength, for only a diverse group of adventurers can overcome the many challenges a D&D story presents. In that spirit, we are committed to making D&D as welcome and inclusive as possible. This part of our world, this part of our work will never end. And then they include a PDF errata that you can download that uh, includes all of the new Hadozi, or all, it, it, well, it includes the Hadozi changes as well as some other errata uh, that w- from the various other Spelljammer Adventures in Space books. So, in many ways, I understand the outrage around this. It there are certain things that you read and certain. Well, I would argue that the most damning evidence of um, negligence i would say on part of wizards of the coast is uh, the imagery depiction mm-hmm. i mean some of the poses are some of the poses and depictions are like straight out of uh, minstrel art mm-hmm. i've i've seen many arguments about the lore inclusion surrounding the hadozi and whether or not it actually is a def- is uh, a depiction of black people um some people say that it is more of a depiction uh, reminiscent of the Planet of the Apes. Mm-hmm. I've also seen um, the Wizard of Oz, the race Wizard of Oz, race as thing. well. Um, I think, I think in many ways that uh, our opinions don't really matter. Mm-hmm. And as we had discussed prior to going live and recording today, our opinions are fairly different. Yes, um, I think ultimately. Wizards of the Coast issuing an apology and changing the content. It is simply lore. It is lore for a a race of creature in D&D that hasn't been relevant in decades. Mm-hmm. And ultimately, 
the idea of an ape-like race that has gliding wings is pretty cool. So if the, if the if changing the lore makes people happy, then whatever. I think ultimately uh, Wizards of the Coast did the right thing here. Yes. Um, I am in very intrigued by what this internal lack of quality control and yeah the statement regrettably not all portions of con- the content relating to the dozy were properly vetted before appearing in the recent release is a i think that's because because there's there's two thoughts here either one they're telling the truth and it was not properly vetted meaning either the you know um cultural uh uh reviewer what's the there's somebody who who looks at things for cultural significance mm-hmm. Um, or their editors, their proofreaders, did it skip all that? In which case, that's that's that is more arguably it's skipping editors and proofreaders and quality assurance readers throughout the entire process. That to me is more is more uh, worrying than people reading it and not seeing anything wrong with it. Mm. In many ways, I, I think that the, how many how many thousands of people work for Wizards of the Coast? How many hundreds of people are in the content creation and and this whole process? Um, how many people had pre release copies of it to do reviews? How many designers worked on it? Now, obviously, not everybody had a hand in the d- Hadozi that was correct. in the books, but I mean, probably what at least like five to six people Mm -hmm. worked very closely on the mechanics of the Hidozi and the lore and the writing and the art and no one, none of them, none of no cultural, um, a consultant, no, yeah, no, uh, culture consultant check, no editor check, no publication check, no, like nothing. How, yeah. How was this not properly vetted? How did this, that, the n- not being able to properly vet it is the more concerning thing to me. Um, we, uh, we'll, we'll, it's some, it's something we'll touch on later, another news item in the wrap up. Um, just go ahead and, and, and pre, pre foreshadow it. That's not the right word. We'll foreshadow it right now is that, uh, the, the, the release of dragons of storm like Isle was fumbled and you got to wonder like wizards of the coast and Hasbro in general. Yeah. How are you letting one of your, two biggest um, uh, releases, uh, releases of, the of the year be be dropped like this. They are they are fumbling the rock at the goal line right here for a, for another football analogy. Fumbling the rock. That technically is combining a football analogy with a, a basketball analogy. Yes, I understand. Ah. Please write and a WWE it. analogy, WWF. Well, just the because, the ro- the just because just his can't. name is The Rock, they just dropped The Rock. Ay, they get to the end zone and they just dropped The Rock. Of course. Anyway, of course. There's a lot of conversation in the community, particularly on Twitter. Twitter, as we have noted in the past, a cesspool of garbage. As the internet is. As the internet is. And the internet is a cesspool of garbage in many ways. Twitter is a distillation of the internet, which means the most ripe and gnarliest garbage to be a cesspool of Mm -hmm. is Twitter. And many on Twitter have just been lambasting Wizards of the Coast up and down over this entire situation. As far as companies go, Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro, I feel like have proven time and time again that they don't want this kind of thing to happen. Mm -hmm. And they're doing what they can. And... I, the fact that they responded this quickly with both an errata and immediately changing the digital versions and changing the any future reprints, as well as issuing a statement days after the release, I'm I'm not too concerned about this going forward. If I'm being entirely honest, the, the, this does seem like an anomaly, and I would love an update from them about what processes and procedures went wrong that may have mm-hmm. led to something like this. Yeah, it's uh, 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 there have been a lot of notes that in June of 2020, um, Wizards released a um, a blog post about how they were going to try to strengthen um, their diversity section and then also apologize for 
uh, uh, pre- you know the fifth the past forty years of issues, things like um, orcs and drow uh, uh, being depicted as um, inherently evil. Inherently evil. You have simplified uh, things like Curse of Strahd and Tomb of Annihilation is just having huge amounts of racial in- insensitivity um, and things like that. And I think that a lot of the community is feeling let down by that. So hopefully Wizards of the Coast does take this opportunity as, as much as that is not the great word for it, but as much as they, hopefully they take this and uh, show the community that they are still improving and maybe even get to be more open. We shall see. We shall see. Um, Moving on. Real quick. Uh, Jared or Jar O. Dale Zander two says, what can I read to catch up from second to third edition, second from second to third edition to fifth? I assume meaning the Hadozi um, lore possibly. Cause that is, that is where the Hadozi came from. I don't think there's a, a great um, overall resource that we know of for taking uh, from seeing what lore was, created in earlier editions and brought into fifth and the comparisons besides uh i think wikipedia actually does a decent job of of having all the options to see how individual things change but um overall lore and uh uh, things like that is going to be definitely some personal research maybe we'll see we'll see moving on moving on um wizards of the coast request an injunction against nutsr the legal team for Wizards of the Coast filed a motion for a preliminary injunction against TSR LLC, Dungeon Hobby Shop Museum LLC, and Justin Lanassa on September 8th, 2022, to prevent the publication of Star Frontier's new Genesis. The mo- motion seeks the court to issue an order to prevent them uh, from Lanass and his companies from publishing, distributing, and otherwise making available Star Frontier's new Genesis or any iteration of the game using the marks. Wizards of the Coast lawyers claim that the company would suffer irreparable harm to their reputation due to customer confusion and that Wizards of the Coast may become associated with playtest documents containing racist, uh, containing content r- considered racist and transphobic. Um, accompanying the motion were two declarations of support with further collaborating evidence. The first coming from Elizabeth M. Shu, director of publishing and licensing for Dungeons and Dragons for Wizards of the Coast, supporting the claim of Wizards of the Coast's investment in the TSR brand, tracing the history, tracing the history through the company's acquisition in 1997 to the release of Star of the Star Frontiers product on one bookshelf and through the purchase of D and D beyond the article goes on to state, uh, the, that, uh, exhibits, um, from the injunction filing, cl- filing include documents of trademarked registration made by Lanasa further screenshots for the TSR brand products for sale in the dungeon hobby shop museum, web store, social media advertisements for star frontier, the new Genesis, a copy of tech Raptor story from 2022 titled TSR star frontier, New Genesis play test content ra- uh, contains racist content and a screenshot of a Twitter thread by user at no hate in gaming documenting materials leaked in the play test. So yeah. Uh, a little irony. A little irony considering what happened this earlier this month and this motion is noted for consideration for, uh, for September 30th of this year. The court date will consider the motion with an oral argument requested. Yeah, they want to talk it out in court or see how far this litigation, whether or not uh, Wizards of the Coast is willing to pursue this litigation further more than just a, an injunction. Um, you have to you have to remember that when it comes to large corporations and legal issues, uh, a lot of the times they do not want to take things all the way to court simply because uh, that would require... M- Corporate lawyers are much more expensive than uh, civil lawsuits or uh, civil attorneys. And the amount of information that has to be brought to light by a corporation to make claims like this and truly bring it to court, a lot of companies would rather not do. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, I think Wizards of the Coast lawyers are being a bit, um, 
grandiose about how horrible their reputation would be harmed by TSR's Star Frontiers, but I I I mean TSR we have I mean earlier this year and late last year blew up huge in in the D&D world because of their uh pretty backwards views on the gaming world. That's true. And I think that um there would probably be some confusion at first, but I don't I don't think over the long haul. I don't I don't think there's going to be much confusion at all, really. I mean, I mean there's going to be old the way I see it Old school people understand that there was a split with Wizards of the Coast and TSR a while ago and that they're two separate entities now. And people that aren't old school D&D players have no clue who the fuck TSR is. <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and any any time, any reporter worth their salt, which is a big asterisk with that, worth their salt, asterisk, it's the internet. Yeah is going to note that they're separate entities, you know? I mean, I would argue let TSR die on the vine. Hmm. You know? I, I don't... I if, don't. If, yeah, have wizards and... I mean... If, if their content is going to be that horrifically offensive, then it will die on the vine. And that's going to be how it's going to be. Do a marketing... You know, yeah, the wizards do a marketing campaign instead, but we'll... Now companies start doing political campaign ads for like <laughs> fuck that other person's product. Right. Like that would be hilarious. I would hate everything about that, but it'd be really funny. Hi, I'm Liam O'Brien. Hi. Running for president. <laughs> Hi. I'm Connor. Do you chew big red? Fuck you. <laughs> that is it. That is a Ricky Bobby ballad of Ricky Bobby reference there. Okay. I also think I had it backwards. I think he said if you don't chew big red, then fuck you. But I digress. Um, litigation, fun. We will stay abreast of that situation, but that's not all, Sam. No. Uh, and you, TSR financial data breach. Whew. TSR, man, what are you doing? Um, <clears throat> the ongoing saga of TSR3 continues as Justin Lanassa, Lanassa, owner of TSR LLC, allegedly stores and has emailed to others a spreadsheet containing customer financial information stored without any form of encoding or encryption. Um, as, as somebody who works, uh, works in, in tech, like I, I am, I, I, that is my job. I am a software engineer. That's like the number one biggest no, no of all times. The second is don't plug in any random USB. You find, but first encode everything, encrypt everything. It's, it's also like, (laughs) <laughs> like if it's just in a spreadsheet like it takes like 10 more seconds to do that it's not hard no. like at all <laughs> anyway in a video released by don samora of wizard tower games samora claims that justin lanas emailed him a spreadsheet in may of this year that included financial information from customers and business partners including full names email addresses home addresses phone numbers and even credit card numbers all stored in plain text with no encoding or encryption this includes customers of TSR or Dungeon Hobby Shop's web stores purchasing products including Cult of Abaddon, Dungeon Crawl, the board game, TSR Dice, and others. I love that the article shows screenshots of the spreadsheet and then they have with noted private information rejected. So yes. like all of it. All of it, yeah. <laughs> Wizards Tower Wizard Tower Games also commented in the N World thread. The full and glorious history of NUTSR, offering to confirm if anyone's personal information was part of the spreadsheet he received. According to David Floor, transactions with the company are processed under the name Port City Cava, an oxygen bar and vape e-cig store run by Justin Lanassa in North Carolina. Basically, real bad. I don't understand why they're trying to keep the TSR brand alive this hard, man. Like... Blow it up. It, it, file for bankruptcy. Fucking settle in court. And if you really want to, if you really care about doing a tabletop thing, fucking start something new. Like, and and also maybe if you're if you're planning on you know collecting pe- pe- people's impersonal information and financial information, encrypt it. You know, mm-hmm. be yeah, be smart about it. Or, Don't steal it. Oh my god. Also, just like that storing of that data is illegal. Like you can't you can't store. Credit card credit card information. That one's that one's the one. Well, there is an asterisk with that in business uh, agreements. You 
leave inf payment information on file for recurring payments of recurring orders and that kind of stuff. There has to be certain, There's, but yeah, there has to be certain levels of encryption and, and encoding. Also true. That's why, that's why like, even if you go into your banking app right now, try to pull up your credit card number oh on your own banking app. Yeah. It's, it's like not possible. Uh, even on uh, my phone's up for the live, but even in like the Apple wallets app, I've added all my credit cards mm -hmm. to it. You get to see the last four digits on those fuckers. Yep. That's it. And there's a reason. So, you fucking morons. <laughs> those people are so stupid. Oh, gosh. That gets my agita up. Agita is an Italian thing. So it's not like a weird... I wasn't speaking in tongues or anything. I mean, technically, yes. That's actually a valid point. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Wrap-up time. Wrap-up time. Tiamat, going to get a cool new statue. Pre-orders are up for it now. Sideshow Collectibles revealed their new statue of Tiamat, the evil goddess of chromatic dragons. It's going to stand at 28 inches tall and have a wingspan of over 30 inches. It depicts Tiamat standing on top of a fiery crag of rock with each of Tiamat's five heads bearing... With each of... This is, this is, this is the quality of... We were talking about quality writing on the internet. This is the quality of writing on the internet here. With each of Tiamat's five heads bearing its heads and readying to attack with the tet. <sighs> a deluxe version of the statue is also available, which comes with a light up element in the mouth of each of Tiamat's five heads. The elements corresponding to the breath weapons, blah de blah de blah. You guys know the breath weapons. That's fine. Uh, the fun bit, the fun bit, you can pre order. Standard version is going to cost you how much, Sam? How much do you think it's going to cost you? A 28 inch by 30 inch statue mm. of Tiamat. $259.99. A little more. $359. A little more. A little more. A little more. A little more. $1,500. A little more. $2,500. A little less. $2,200. $1,980. Two $1 $1,980 for the standard version. The deluxe version with the light up mouths, $2,145. How big did you say this was? 28 inches. Tall. Tall, 30 inch wingspan. So a little over two feet tall. So it's not a, it's a fucking it's a statue. Yeah. Like it, it, you're not slapping this bitch on a table by any means. For no, game, you got like a fucking pedestal for that. It, I just love that you were like, oh, 250. I'm like, no more, more, more. And when you hit a thousand and I said more, you gave me the like head tilt of really? <laughs> Good shit. I'm, I'm, when these things get announced, you know, even the Tiamat Mini, which I think is pretty similar size to that. No, there's not up there, but giant minis. I'm, I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking at the, our adult red dragon box and like this statue is going to be bigger than that. Oh yeah. Well, by yeah. a fair, by a fair, by the box, by a fair amount. Yes. So. But it's, it's like how, I'm always curious I would love to see the sales on these things. Like, it's, obviously. It's for the whales. It's for the whales. But I'd like to see how many people actually buy this. And then I would further like to know, who, of the people who actually buy this, how many of them shouldn't be buying this because of their financial situation? Most of them. Well, I would argue most with, of them. Yeah, with these stat with these statue statues. Maybe a little less, but with, like, the, the minis, the Tiamat mini, the fucking giant minis, Probably more. Oh, for sure. For sure. Next item in the wrap-up, Target. As we know, Target was the sole original release retail partner for D&D's new starter set, The Dragons of Stormwreck Isle. Apparently, they fucked it up pretty bad. <laughs> it's it, This is anecdotal from the internet. Struggled to find the article that I originally read. I didn't think to. I, I didn't copy and paste that link like a big old dumb dumb big, idiot. Big dummy dumb dumb. But it's out of stock. If people people were struggling, if not, it, it wasn't possible to order it online or pre-order it or designate it as a pickup and like reserve a cop. Like all of that just was not working for a lot of people. And the people that did manage to get it ordered and shipped to them. It was, it was coming in damaged. I mean, 
I, have you heard about uh, The Last of Us Part 1, the Firefly edition that no. Sony released? Uh, they they re-released The Last of Us Part 1, mm-hmm. it, a new, uh, re-re-released it. They like redid it from the ground up. It looks gorgeous, whatever. But they did a $100 Firefly special edition version, and they were taking this beautifully crafted special edition of a game and putting it in a fucking bubble mailer and not expecting anything to go wrong in the shipping process and like most people that received their versions of that it was coming in fucked up kind of a similar deal here with dragons of stormwreck isle a lot of people were getting it fucked up if they were getting it shipped target was out of stock constantly when they were in stock it was like two copies it huh i don't know what was going on with this partnership with target but like Hasbro has to know better with this kind of stuff. When they make a D&D release, it's going to be big. And if you're going to lock it to one retailer for a while, that limited run where it is limited to one retailer, people people aren't willing to wait for stuff anymore. Right? People aren't willing to wait for video games. They're not willing to wait for movies. They're not willing to wait for D&D. They're not willing to wait for anything. And part of that is the internet and spoiler culture and wanting to be in on the loop and the zeitgeist and keeping that going. But as a company, Hasbro needs to fucking know that, you know? Right. And this is not their first rodeo, you know? Like, I get it. If this was a new company who, like, suddenly had this product, and like, all right, first first thing, let's go. No. Hasbro has had, you know, Wizards of the Coast for many years. They've had a deal. They've, they've, they've had so much of their product in Target for so many years. What are you doing, Hasbro? And finally, next month, Monty Python's co- 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 co-curricular medieval reenactment program, <laughs> spelled the British way, yes, that is its real name, will appear on Kickstarter. The in, game, in the game, players will carry out quests in medieval Britain using a new rules-like game system. Characters include knights, enchanters, royalty, monks, peasants, and more, each of which have 5 to 20 possible traits, such as science, glibness, sorcery, and so on. The system has players rolling a die, the size of which is determined by the silliness of the traits level. It's just a silly little goose over there. He's just so silly. In place of a GM, the game features the Head of Light Entertainment. You can read more about it over on Diceburger. Diceburger. Iceberger. We talked about this recently, Samuel. Why does everything need to be a TTRPG? I don't know. Everybody's trying to get the slice of the pie. I get it. TTRPGs are hot right now, but like, we don't. We don't need a million of them. I think it's kind of a race to the bottom in some ways. Like they're not all going to be good. This no. Is such a ni- it's such a fucking niche product. Who's going to play the Monty Python tabletop RPG? More than once. I think that's... I mean, the, I'd play it once. Exactly. I, I, I think that there are um, just so many. Just so many people. So many. Just so many people who... Like you said, it's D&D is hot right now. Or, t- tabletops RPGs are hot right now. And people love them. And there's a huge, you know... There's a huge following. But I, I'm, I'm sure, like anything, it's going to go through its ebbs and flows mm-hmm. um, of popularity. And, you know, five years from now, ten years from now, will we see a lot of these have dropped off? Probably. In in 35 years, will some, you know, will we go to Gen Con? Gen Con's not going anywhere. Will we go to Gen Con and see, um, like my uncle, look at a booth and go... Oh man, that was fifteen dollars back when I when I was your age. <laughs> and we look at the co-curricular medieval reenactment program uh, uh, book on the shelf of some vintage collector. I mean, I'd, I'd buy it for ten, fifteen bucks at a Goodwill. That's about all. <laughs> That's about all I'd do that for. Right. That being that being said, big fans of Monty Python and the Holy Grail here yeah. in this house. Oh yeah. Big fan of we stand T P T T R P Gs. So one D and D. So one D and D. Yes. Let's. The survey for the first Unearthed Arcana is available until September fifteenth. If you are watching this live, that'll be next Thursday. If you are watching this when it posts, you have a day to complete the survey for 
One D and D. Now we have our entire one D and D episode. Mm-hmm. We don't need to rehash all of that. But now that we've had a chance to mull things over a little bit, had a chance to really get our get our thoughts and minds wrapped around this. How how have your how have your opinions of of this playtest uh, evolved? Well, I think that honestly, I'm still a fan of a lot of the changes that they have made. I think that uh, that you know ourselves and and the community at large were very reactive and very uh, uh, detrimental about a, a couple of changes, specifically the D20 tests, success and failures. Is it as bad as we see as 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 everybody has been freaking out about it? I don't think it's as bad as everybody is saying. Of course. And I think that's mostly it. I've had time to stew on it and I've had time to kind of look at it and be like, all right, all right. Everything is honestly very similar. It is. It, I mean, it, it's the same. It's the same game. It's fifth edition. It's, it's, it's fifth edition. It is fifth edition. Do you have any specifics you want to get into? No, let's start with, go ahead. Let's, well, we'll, we'll talk about, we'll, we'll, we got the D20 test. We got the D20 test. And obviously the big glaring, put a red X through it and start over is the critical hits. Yes. I, people are trying to make crits more powerful Mm -hmm. and they nerf it like very heavily here. It, it's removing it's 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 adding rules to a fun factor thing yes like, just let it be fun it's fine i get a lot of the 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 hate around the auto the auto success auto fail nat one nat 20 and i get what they're what the response is from uh if you want they did a, like a whole hour-long breakdown on dean to beyond's youtube Mm -hmm. Uh, going over this and they brought up like yes a lot of tables play with this already and in a lot of instances you shouldn't be calling for a roll and I would argue that rolling dice is fun yeah in certain tasks it might just be more fun to let the let your player like let your let your rogue roll to unlock the fucking commoner's chest (laughs) You know, like it's rolling dice. That's like half the fun. Right. I, the idea of there at the best case scenario, always being a 5% chance that you are going to fail regardless of how good you are at a thing. And a 5% chance that you're going to succeed regardless of how good you are at the thing. I don't like that. Yeah. Certain tasks should be impossible. Certain tasks shouldn't not be impossible like certain certain tasks you should be able to do repeatedly over and over again without fail mm-hmm. for the most part extenuating circumstances notwithstanding sure so would i be upset if they kept the rolling rolling a one and rolling a 20 no i there's plenty of people that play like that yeah it's a perfectly correct way to do it i would change the wording a little bit i don't like I don't like the a D20 test has to have a target number no less than five and no greater than 30. Who gives a shit? Right. Give a suggested range. Don't make it a rules requirement. And go back to the fucking drawing board with critical hits. The other side of the D20 test, the inspiration part. Mm-hmm. I like it more and more the more I think about it. People are worried about it diluting the effectiveness of something like portent lucky um, other features like that, that allow you to do on demand Mm rerolls. And in my mind, it's just more fun, right? (laughs) To get some rerolls. I mean, it's a random chance game. It, it, a lot of variant rules, like the comp, the most common variant rule that I think most everybody plays with flanking. Mm-hmm. If you're on opposite ends of a miniature, then when you make an attack, you get an advantage. People are already doing everything that they possibly can to fucking get advantage to roll a second dice at it. Why not just be like, all right, once per day, you can just roll another dice at it. Yeah. You know, and like a big story moment, like this is your chance to study an artifact or, or a book or a scroll or some texts or something, translate something, anything. It's going to have this big lore drop that's going to be an 
a, a moment where the party gets really invested in the story and the world building and they roll a five for a total of eight. Mm-hmm. Like inspiration just fucking roll it and fixes that problem. And and the thing about inspiration is it's not it's not like it's not a new mechanic. Right now the on, in in 5e in raw the only way to get inspiration is for the DM to award it. If you're if you're a DM like me, I never think about it. Not at, not once. Oh yeah, no. I and if, I believe it's supposed to be for anything epic. Basically, the the description, the wording is the, more the better description than on the current inspiration is garbage. Yeah, and and I've and I agree with. I can't remember what what whoever I saw talk about it, but they pointed out that rewarding good role play, like that's supposed to be what it is. You reward good role play is very subjective. It's so subjective. I mean, and and the guy who you know maybe you got a new player at the table, maybe you have an old player who just likes to be there for combat, but mm-hmm. he he loves the game. He loves staying around. Maybe he just doesn't like acting, um, or maybe you know the new player doesn't you know, isn't comfortable yet. So rewarding good role play is yeah again it's very yeah. it's very wishy washy. It's very uh, uh, is almost Pavlovian, you know. <laughs> yeah, I only have two other main things that I want to well three that I want to touch on okay I still I like I like their rules for half for half races okay I still think there should be a dedicated half elf and half orc they're that quintessential to they're they're that separate from other half half and half races I would say the half the half elf is I'm the half elf goes all the way back to Tolkien the OGest of fantasies and they're yeah. treated differently and they have different power set. I, I get it. It's for streamlined purposes. I would still like to see a couple half races, make some exceptions. I mean, at that point, I think I, I'm fine with them not including it. I'm um, fine with it. It's just a preference though. It's a preference. And I think maybe, maybe down the line we will get like an interesting, um, um, half, half you know the Morton Canaan's uh or Xanathar's a uh, big collection of other races and that'll include a bunch of different new combos uh combo races mm-hmm. um but that being said it doesn't it, it ultimately I think it 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 doesn't affect too much when mm-hmm. it comes down to it I'm I'm fine with it yeah I, I don't know if we ever brought this up either on the previous one but the Ardling it's pretty clear that they just wanted to have like a catch all look like your animal fursona character generator race option, right? Yeah, I mean I just thought that was funny. They all, I I, they do just have a bunch of suggested <laughs> animals and it's like, okay, it's, yeah. It's like, all right, here in the PHB you can be your cat person, a dog person, a lion person, a fucking frog person, whatever. Any of your any of your other any of your fucking Bojack horseman combinations, whatever. Have at it. Or those like um uh, the, my Hero Academia. A lot of mm. if you have a power yeah. based on an animal, then you kind of have those animals traits. I think that the yeah, also that kind of thing. Yeah. Unarmed strikes. Uh, they are now the mechanic by which you shove and grapple. Shove. I feel like I'm. It makes more sense to me. Grapple still feels weird that it's an attack roll to grapple someone. Part of it's like yeah, you gotta grab. Like you actually have to like land a hit to be able to grab and pull them in. Mm-hmm. Um. I think that's just a me thing right now, figuring that out. But it just still feels strange. I think what it, I, I think it, um, I do like that it makes uh, the monk an actual good grappler, which makes a lot of sense that they would be a good grappler. I think that, especially, so I was playing some D and D, um, this weekend and 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 last weekend, and it came up that I needed to just, I needed to non lethally stop somebody. <laughs> And um, <clears throat> I try, and it was like one of those things where, yeah, I have like the ability to grapple, but due to the current rules, my character was just pretty much unable to. And while while the 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 ultimate purpose of it, or the ultimate effectiveness of it, whether I grabbed or not, you know, is neither here nor there. Mm-hmm. It's just the fact that every time, because of the character's negative strength modifier. There's no way they could, you know, we're going to beat the uh, even in a, even in a a a, a decent roll off against this other yeah. stronger character. It, I think it it does make it more effective, 
and gives more utility of the grapple to more characters. Yeah. And and if, you know, who knows, maybe we'll see some other like spells and abilities uh, in, in future play tests that are, are alongside the grapple. Mm hmm. Uh, finally, the spell lists. <laughs> mm-hmm. I do like that it's consolidated into three. They made an exception for Eldritch Blast. Mm-hmm. They probably should make a couple other exceptions for other classes. I don't, it doesn't feel right that the smite spells are would be available to a cleric. It doesn't feel right that Hunter's Mark would be available to a druid. <laughs> Doesn't feel right that hex is available to a wizard or well. I, honestly, that one's kind of okay, but some of the other armor vagathis, you know, and that's again vicious mockery. Like, what fucking bookworm is going to be able to be smart? Well, smart enough, sure, but smart charismatic elegant. enough to pull off a fucking insult spell? Like, you know, I think that the the that maybe um, lore wise with vicious mockery. Yeah, definitely doesn't make sense. Mechanically, the spell isn't that great. Yeah, compared to other cantrips that you could use, um, but it's <clears throat> it's the it's the notable absence of Eldritch Blast that keeps sticking with me though. Like, if Eldritch Blast is going to be that special of a cantrip that you need to keep it separate from the arcane list and exclusive to the warlock, like there right, are other yeah. things that are like as quintessential to other classes. You know, Hunter's Hunter's Mark is a ranger staple to the point that it's almost a feature and a must take spell, you know, except that it still kind of sucks, except except that it still kind of sucks. It sucks. No, I mean, it's about the same as Hex, which is also fine. I, I think, mean, I'm, I'm working on a whole video about a semi rebuttal, semi in agreement with the pack tactics content about Hex and uh, Hunter's Mark about how they're bad. But I'm I'm almost guessing that. I mean, we've, we, you know, the, the thing that makes, um, Eldritch Blast super effective or super special to the Warlock class, um, because obviously you can cast a Firebolt and a Firebolt is 1d10 fire damage Mm -hmm. and Eldritch Blast is 1d10 force damage. The thing that makes it effective or special, which a lot of people actually, I, you know, in, in a lot of like posts and a lot of media moving away from with the Eldritch Blast are the evocations that make it do extra things. Um, so I'm curious is if they are going to change the Eldritch Blast to be from a spell to a class feature like we've talked about. Or whether it's yeah. going to be a class specific spell. But if they're going to make those evocation effects something not evocations. You know, like yeah. when you take when you you know, you can choose to do one of these items or whenever you level up, you may add an effect to your Eldritch Blast. I don't know. We don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That's my thoughts on it. Anyway, you have until September 15th to take the survey. Now, I feel like they probably should just left that up for a little bit longer, but that's it's the standard for their stuff. They're trying to get a lot of these out. We should be looking forward to another one sometime this month? Next month? I don't know. Maybe? Anyway. They haven't really announced the, uh, the, the playtest drop schedule, have they? Mm-hmm. No. No, they haven't. Now, that's all the news that we have for you today on the Dungeon Bros Podcast, but we like to end every episode with... Song and dance. Song and dance. No, with with questions, comments, concerns, thoughts, and or ideas from the audience. Primarily, if you want to get your question, comment, concern, thought, or idea read on the show... You should join our Discord server. Link in the link tree in the bio of our TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, all of the things. All of the things. All of the things. And uh, we do have a question this week from uh, Lethal in the Discord server. Oh, lethal, lethal asks, Hello, what do Lethal. You... Hello, Lethal. Uh, he's, a, he's a relatively new addition to the Discord. Fabulous. Love Very that wonderful. you're asking questions. Get more people to do that. I know. Fight them. I know. Ooh. Fight them to get them to join the Discord? No, to get them to ask questions. Ah, that is fair. He asks, what do you think is the best race and class? Now, hmm. that is that is a that is a broad, open-ended question. It really is. Best is in the eyes of the beholder. It is indeed subjective. As, as there are multiple uh, eyes in a beholder. There are quite a few. So, for me, I think the best. This is also mechanically not my favorite. The best class 
has to be the cleric. Hmm. I, 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 it, I feel like it has to be the cleric. They have prepared spell casting. They have some of the most powerful subclasses. They have the most variety of hmm. subclasses. Their spell list is fucking bomb at every single level. Do they lack a bit in the damaging department? Yeah, but they have they have damaging spells that aren't slouching. That's for sure. They get great non-concentration spells. They get great concentration spells. They get in great instant spells. They get buffs, debuffs, healing, resurrection. De- just uh, the world is their oyster. Mm. Oysters. Race. I feel like that's a bit more up in the air, up to personal preference. Um, I would argue the variant human. Level one feet hmm. would be the best race. Interesting. Um, as as a side note, your game that uh, that we play in um, recently, mm-hmm. developing characters, I believe uh, you said since, and 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 maybe this is just a as as the fact that you were giving us feats. You said uh, no to somebody doing a variant human for the feat, simply because we were getting level one feats. Um, and I don't want to give out two feats at level one. So let's let's assume now with the the uh, idea that every level one character is going to have a feat. Well, with that, with with that, let's say that everybody did that. Did your method of of and my method and Darren's method. Well, this was this. What is what would you then say? Well, with, the with that elimination of the feat. The by limit you mean eliminate because everybody's getting human. a feat now okay. now the fairy human well the human the human in one D is also going to be getting an additional feat on top of that now they're going to be getting a two feet True. they're going to get two feats at level one um so i would say still in that situation with the one D races i think the human is the best amongst them particularly with the daily inspiration after a long rest um now not counting the variant human and this might and this might ruffle some jimmies here. I want to make sure I get the this the sub race right. For those of you who uh, don't know what rustle your jimmies means, um, we're just showing our age a little bit. We're not that old, but we're showing our age. Mountain dwarf. Mountain dwarf. By raw, they would be getting a plus two to con. Uh, they would also be getting a plus two to strength, making them the only race that gets plus four. To statistics at level one uh they get light and medium armor which is going to be very beneficial for the casters and that's, that's about all <laughs> the mountain i mean getting a static plus four to stats at the beginning especially if you're using the variant where they're the floating ones plus two plus two i mean that's better and getting automatic light and medium armor proficiency is going to be I mean, suddenly the mountain dwarf with the introduction of variant rules in Tasha's of the floating pl- of the floating ability score modifiers, mm-hmm. plus two, plus two, plus two con, plus two whatever else. Being a spellcaster, you can wear medium armor now. With a close second being the hill dwarf, simply for the plus one to maximum hit points every level in addition to the normal. So I would argue that the two main sub races of dwarf would be, quote unquote, the best. Contentious, I know. Hmm. I'm going to say for the best class, um, even though I'm not a huge fan of playing them, uh, the Paladin. Interesting. Paladin. A Marshal. The Marshal. No, a half caster. Well, a half. Well. A half caster that has a lot of variety when it comes to um, in, in that Marshal field of you know weapons and armor and how you want to flavor that or how what how powerful you want to be with that um but then their native smite very powerful in combat and then they also get a lot of uh uh uh, every subclass has its own special proficiency um to a skill and then they have healing they have extra damage output they have buffing and debuffing depending on your subclass uh, I think the the paladin is one of going to be is one of those that, um, interesting. It's very, it's very, uh, it, it, you know, it's one of those that if you saw a whole party of paladins, you'd be like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, this whatever I have, the crusades. <laughs> <laughs> um, as far as best uh, uh, race, um, especially once they moved. Uh, uh, the plus the floating plus two plus one plus or yeah floating plus two plus one um in tasha's 
I always do that now. One, it makes things it's a lot so, less. It's just so simpler. It's so simpler. Um, I mean, I'm a big fan of, uh, of the half work. I love playing a half work. Half work. Half work was was another one up there for me. And I think it's just that relentless endurance. It, it's a big one. It's it is a big massive. one. I think that's going to be my vote. Interesting that we both go with the uh, divine spellcasting usage. Well, that's also another thing is when you look at the leveling up table, the um, cleric and the paladin have very little dead space. They really do. The the on the other hand, the wizard every other level dead space. The sorcerer every other level dead space. Now, I would never have gone with any of the martial classes or half casting. Hmm. Period. Straight up. The spell casting, whilst level one or two might be a bit rough compared to martials, in the long run, starting at level five, I mean, your 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 growth is exponential, and their growth is, or your growth is logarithmic. Their growth is linear. Hmm. And for me. My second choice would have been the druid. I mean, Paladin would have been way you, down the list. You for agree me. with potions and and poems? Oh, uh, very just nice. comment druid is the best, but it depends on the campaign. Interestingly enough, that is the next thing. The other way that you can get your stuff read on the podcast is through the TikTok live chat. We record on TikTok this podcast live every two weeks, shortly before we post it. Sam, what do we got in the well, chat today? Today, feel free if you are in the chat right now to smack that smack your screen several times to give us the old likes delicately not hard enough to damage your phone though. that the like the likes help tiktok lives to perform better quite a bit and uh we would appreciate it just so much uh the raven syndicate says no questions but coming by to say hi hi raven oh, syndicate. We, we like raven raven has not been in the chat for quite a while because we've been talking it's been a hot minute um it's been an hour swizzle town comes in swizzle town swizzle town most hated enemy type in D&D. Enemy type? Enemy type. Hmm. That's tough. Yeah. I can use... So, if you've been watching The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, you will recognize this reference. I could use my head sense or my heart sense. Mm-hmm. My head sense, I'm still working through it, but and, and to much, much to Sam's chagrin... The first thing that popped in my head was the ooze. Now you shall face. So <laughs> I mean, actually, your oozes are allies currently. So yeah, all right, yeah. It's enemy oozes, terrifying, <laughs> utterly, utterly fear striking into my soul. Oh, that's fair. Honestly, humanoids. <laughs> that honestly. was going to be mine as well. Is just kind of yeah the the generic like cultists or bandits. Obviously, you can wipe the floor with those. You but. can, yeah. Um, but, I mean, they are very, quint- like you say, you've been saying, quintessential. They're quintessential low-level enemies. It's mm-hmm. just, you know... Eh. The variety of enemy types and the unexpected nature that you come across when you're engaging with a humanoid, particularly NPCs, is... Yikes. Easy there, killer. Easy there, killer. So, yeah. I think uh, we're going with humanoid, apparently. Okay. <laughs> Generic humanoid. <laughs> Interesting. Um, Gordon Freeman five come, says, "What's up, guys? What's up, What's Gordon? Up? Are you a fisherman? Mm. Just the Gordon's fisherman? Moving Gordon on. Freeman. I was I was making a fish sticks commercial reference. I continue. Oh, isn't like Gordon Foods? Just just the Gordon's fisherman. No, oh, okay, I have no idea what that is. It's a it's a jingle for the fucking fish sticks, man. Come on." I, I didn't grow up eating fish sticks. I still currently don't eat fish sticks. Downsides of working in television, ladies and gentlemen. Upsides of not watching television and only watching streaming services. There's a lot of those. There There's are a lot, lot of those. Uh, potions and poems. Are you both in relationships? And if so, do you play with your partners? Uh, no, I am very much single. I am not single. And uh, she has played D&D with us before. Um, she wants to do like this cute little, um, it, I think it was a date night D and D thing, like mm. a little one player, one DM thing. And the DM swaps each chapter. Um, that seems pretty cool. So we'll be doing that. Okay. So both, both, <laughs> both, 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 both is good. good. <laughs> we need to stay off TikTok. Um, actually oh, we can't that's, because that's, that's our that, platform. Quite, yeah. That we, um, we have, we have. 21,000 followers there. And 
Um, fucking sidebar here. Um, a million likes. Hell yeah. We have a million likes on TikTok Hell now, which yeah. is ludicrous. Fuck yeah. Bing bong. <laughs> fuck your life. That's awesome. That's and awesome. amazing. Thank you. Um, your boy Izzy. Actually, your boy Izzy. Ooh. The uh, glizziest of Izzy's. He's not a hot dog. He is not a sandwich. Well. Uh, what are your guys' thoughts on D and D one? I myself am not a fan of it. Well, your boy Izzy. Here's well, we 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 talked a little bit about one D and D a little bit, and uh, we did an entire episode of our first impressions of one D and D. It is fifth edition. If you like fifth edition, you're probably going to like one D and D. So, yeah. There's a lot of people that are hating on it, and there's a lot of people that don't like certain things. That's what the play test is round is for. That's yeah. what the surveys are for. Let it be known. Voice it on social media. Whatever. But the people that are like, I hate, I hate one D and I don't get that because it's the same game and the same mechanics, and things are just called a little differently. And there's a lot of tweaks. Yeah, I think I think that it is very hard to sweepingly, and and I've also had conversations with people. I don't understand the sweeping. I don't like it. Is it because you don't like a certain aspect? I think like uh, the, like we were saying, we don't like the D twenty test and the way it and is currently crit- offered, and the critical hit, and we're concerned about other changes. Uh, there's the concerned about the leveling of feats. Um, clearly, they were offering up a smattering of first level feats, but there's a lot of notable absences that are very popular first level feat mm-hmm. options for the variant humans um, that would no longer be available under these rules, seeing as the variant human gets a first level feat mm-hmm. and not just a feat, you know. And and so and then we like other things. We like the new um, uh, unarmed strike for. Tripping yep. and and the slowed condition is great. The slowed condition is great. The consolidated spell lists. Um, they've changed. They changed up some of the races that made that honestly given them buffs. The tiefling, the orc come to mind. Mm-hmm. The dwarf and, comes to mind. <laughs> and the idea that a a as as we've just this is a limited view. This is the this is the we're looking through the keyhole here. Yeah. At this material. And they're still building the room, so as as far as it goes, we're we're we're, we're on both sides of it. We yeah. understand both sides of it, but I just again I I'm, I'm if I you, struggle to fi- understand how people have these sweeping. Yeah. I do not like it. If you really like don't, it. if you really really don't like it, like at all, meticulously write out what you do not like about it, and tell them. Mm-hmm. If you really don't like it, and you think you make good points about why you don't like it, then do that. It's you might be right. That's encouraged. That's what. That's the whole point of this playtesting round. Go do that. Moving on. Darren's also on that. I don't like it. I'm like, why don't you like what it? What doesn't? Yeah, I don't. I don't, uh, I don't. I don't. What's not to like? Uh, Most of it's, oh, it's Raven? different. Oh, uh, Raven. Sorry. The, uh, Raven is in, is in the chat. It says, congrats no. on the million likes. I thought you had left. You, Maybe you came back. I don't know. But thank thank you. you. Thank you. Papa kiss. Ooh, let's see. Um, potions and poems. I don't hate it, but I don't like the potential paywall of sus- of the subscription model. That is a valid point. That is a great concern to bring up, uh, particularly about the. I believe they're talking about the the virtual tabletop part of it. Mm. Um, I think the inclusion of the digital copy with the physical release was an inevitability once they acquired D and D Beyond. Um, at least I was hoping it would be an inevitability. Mm-hmm. The virtual tabletop, I am concerned with pricing scheme, with where it's being released, mm-hmm. with um, is it going to be free to play and microtransaction ridden hellscape? Is like what are the creation tools with it? Are they going to encourage custom things that you can share and create? Like, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of question marks, and we only know a thousand yard view, and I'm sure we're going to get more details on this in the future. And they may even do a playtest of it of sorts, which would be really fucking fun. And I would love if they did a playtest of the actual virtual tabletop that you could like sign up for. Yeah. And then offer guidance on or concerns with. Mm -hmm. So it's that is also that is a very valid concern. Um, Right now, I put it on the back burner because we don't have enough information. Yeah. Um, 
the the virtual tabletop I think is is one of the most anticipated parts mm-hmm. of it because some there I mean we are on a Discord for another for a, a RPG stories that dropped a Kickstarter and was funded in eight hours for a um, which by the way congratulations to RPG yeah, stories being to RPG f- being funded in eight hours is unbelievably impressive yeah but uh we so we've seen plenty of other um you know groups organizations and and small companies come and and try to fill this space and it's clear it's a space that people want filled exactly and so if if wizards does not do this right they may just drive people to to a to a competitor of theirs. You know, if they, even if they don't care to look at these other uh, smaller organizations' competitors, but we'll yeah. see. Um, uh, the Raven Syndicate. I'm trying a level zero start with the new backgrounds. Interesting. I've always been intrigued by the people that do. <coughs> Sorry. I've always been intrigued by people that do level zero sessions. Hmm. And I, I, I want to pick brains of people that actually consistently do them. Like, what amount of level zero? Sans class? Obviously. Mm-hmm. But without a class, what are your hit points? What's your starting hit points? What are you... Do you have any equipment? Mm-hmm. Like, it's it's a weird gray area. Like, how much of a class are you going to... Contri- like, the level zero where it's like... Okay, you get your starting hit points, you get your proficiencies, you get your equipment. Mm-hmm. You don't get any class features. That's one thing. Yeah. I think that would be interesting. I do like the idea of being like, you got one hit point. If you want to do combat, you can do combat. <laughs> Might not end well. Not going to end well. <laughs> or or maybe, or maybe if it was uh, you know what class you're going to take, you take half the starting hit points or something like that. I think that would one d four. I think that would be that would be fascinating. Or, or in the case of the commoner example, just taking four plus your con, mm-hmm. and then calling that your starting hit points for level zero. I think that would be fascinating. But I think what you're getting at here, I think. Well, I don't what what your question brings to mind is why. I, I, like this play test for the first one D and D just seems so weird because like, what do you want us to play test? <laughs> right. Like it's clear. Can that we create a character? Absolutely. This was, this one was labeled character creation. Yeah. Well, how does this interact with the updates to the cleric mm-hmm. or the ranger or the wizard? Or what about crafting? What about these fucking tool proficiencies and gaming set proficiencies right they made it seem to make a big deal out of those exactly so there's a lot there's a lot of the picture that we're still missing with it but enjoy your level zero one shot that sounds i've 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 always been intrigued by the all right we're going to do like a purely like we're if you guys are in combat like this could that could end the campaign (laughs) kind of D &D game i think that would be fascinating creation that would be fascinating um so potions and poems i'm jumping ahead a little bit honestly that sounds like fun like a bunch of npc villagers that have to take up arms actually i do have i believe it was in arcadia or the one of the arcadias the um Monthly uh, Matt Col- uh, MCDM publishing uh, public magazine published mm-hmm. uh, one of them. They did a level zero. Here's how to run a level zero campaign or a level zero session. And the way they set it up was you don't run one person. You run a group of people and whoever survives that group then becomes your PC. That's awesome. <clears throat> I. Ooh, that's fun. I'll see if I can find it and send it to you. That's fun. Um, Potions and poems. Once again, it says fans of homebrew. Any favorite homebrew rules you have? Well, well, it's funny you should bring that up. Uh, 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 we got homebrew. We do. If you go to the link tree in our bio right now for any of our social medias, you can find us on the Drive Through RPG, where we have monthly free homebrew. Our most recent one was a subclass for the fighter known as the Marrow Knight. Mm-hmm. The Marrow Knight, using bones and blood magic to fuel their fightery abilities. Now. This Marrow Knight is an inspiration from uh, an idea that we had late into the development of our beloved Blood Magic and Hemocraft supplement, a 38-page supplement for $4.99 on Drive-Thru RPG. If you join the Discord server and you go to the Announcements tab, there is a permanent link there for, I believe, a 20% discount on it. So it is $3.99 instead of $4.99. 
Well, I feel like now is as good a time as I need to go through the socials and yeah. button this bitch up, as they say. You can find us on the TikTok where over 21,000 of you already follow us and a million likes yeah. from those 21,000 people and, I'm sure, followers people. that we don't yet have. Yes. People we have to hunt down. Yeah. You can subscribe to us on the YouTube where our views seem to be going up, at least for the YouTube content, and we're wanting to make more and more YouTube content every day. Uh, you can follow us on the Instagram page that Sam runs. We've got a lot of wonderful pictures of recently it's been Armada it's painting. Been Armada because that's what I've been doing. Yes. Um, you can also find us on the aforementioned drive through RPG where we release Homebrew every month for free. Pay what you want. It's a great way to support us as well as our blood magic supplement that we just mentioned. The Discord server is free and open for anyone to join. Mm -hmm. We love having people in there. It's been getting a lot more active. We had a lot more people join recently. Uh, there's people like uh, DK Alexander. He loves running one shots for new players. Uh, there's an entire channel where you can try and connect with other people. Uh, right now, there's a lot of people that want to play, not a lot of DMs. So if you would love to DM for some strangers, even on a short term basis, or practice DMing skills on people, then throw it in there. I'm sure you will have no problem finding <laughs> players. Um, so you can join us there. And, of course, podcasting services around the globe. Apple, Google, Spotify, microwave ovens. Um, probably my cat's now uh, uh, water bowl, yes. which is electronic. We, electronic. Have ele we have a water fountain for her now. Yes. Uh, just if you want to join, just ask our cat to plunge her head deep into the fountain and whisper... The sacred words. Mew, mew. Mew, mew. And with that out of the way. <laughs> Potions and Poems says that they love DMing. We love oh. DMing too. Except you, should, we... you should join our Discord and offer to DM for strangers. Ironically, we have never DM'd a game for our Discord. We don't have time to DM I'm, for... No. It's just ironic. I would love to. It's in the cards. It's in the cards. Maybe, Maybe. offline. Maybe an eventual Patreon thing. Monthly thing run by one of us. Maybe a giveaway at... So many Give subscribers away. or so many followers on TikTok. Ooh. Dodie, take that down. That is our vacuum cleaner. And with all that out of the way. Thank you. And peace out. I didn't want to take your thing.